Okay, four minutes after 8 p.m. and welcome back. It's time now for our next segment. Uh, we just had a wonderful segment with Yusuf Saib. We were talking Formula One. We're now going to be talking about uh, cigarettes and vape and e-cigarettes as obviously um, there's calls for government to pass laws to regulate the sale and marketing of the heated tobacco devices such as your vapes, etc. And, um, you know, it's gaining quite a bit of traction. Now, to give us a bit more on this topic, uh, we welcome uh, Peter Yuko to the program tonight, to Friday Night Live. And uh, Peter, a very a warm welcome and good evening to you. Well, salam alaikum. Okay, great stuff. Peter, thanks for taking the time. Great to have you with us. Now, obviously, um, you know, the government calls for this regulation to be passed. First things first. Um, there's been many regulations over the years as time has gone by. Um, you know, now we're talking about, obviously, now there's new uh, product regulations in, you know, the era of reduced harm. For example, you know, the FDA, um, you know, they were... Uh, back in 2020 they authorized the icos tobacco heating system all right i'm sure these are some systems that will have uh you know uh, impact or rather will be impacted by such a regulation now um the control of such uh, let's firstly start off with this exactly um the debate on the regulation right now where are we standing with it as it currently stands okay let's unpack there's a lot of questions and a lot of information i can give you in what you've just said so let's begin yes. with unpacking it we're not talking about regulations we're talking about a bill which will when it's gone through the process of public hearings and parliament and so on become mm -hmm. an act okay and that's an act of parliament so it's a basic law the regulations may later follow from that act but it's mm. a combination of legislation which will govern everything that happens but right now we are busy with a bill that was published. There was a lot of public comment. Changes, I understand, have been made to the bill, a lot of it on recommendations from TAG. And we're now waiting for a process for Cabinet to approve it, of course, delayed by the disaster that we've had for the last 12 months. The Cabinet to approve it so that it can go to Parliament and then go through the process of public hearings. Then okay. we will have new legislation and the Minister will pass regulations defining certain things that the bill and then the act will allow and then there's more that we can unpack about what you call vape i'd like to yes. try and alter the thinking about that and the reduced harm we can discuss all of that because it's not quite as simple as the industry would like to make it appear okay now we are talking about potential revenue as well you know from taxing of the e-cigarettes uh there's comparisons of your annual cost of a daily e-cigarette versus you know uh smoking over normal cigarette among south african adults right so obviously uh we're talking about taxation etc as you mentioned uh why do you think right now uh there's such a call for this as we you know in 2021 why do you think it's now and why wasn't it passed back in 2020 for example uh when you know the uh you know, uh, heated devices like ICOS, et cetera, were launched. Yes. Unfortunately, the legislative process is just slow. It's far too slow for the good of public health. And that's what the bill is about. It's about improving public health, protecting lives, particularly pre protecting the youth from starting mm. to smoke, from starting to use electronic devices. And all in all, be of benefit to South Africa as a whole. So what is that whole? If we start taxing electronic devices, which they aren't at the moment, and cigarette tax is a separate issue, and it's too low, in my opinion, that's a separate discussion we can have, and I can okay. explain why and what it should be. But there should be a tax on electronic devices, and we call them in the bill, they listed as electronic nicotine delivery systems, and then electronic non-nicotine delivery systems, because some of them just have fluids with flavors and so on, which in theory don't have nicotine. However, it has been found that even in the non-nicotine fluids, there is nicotine. So unbeknownst to you, you could be using one of these devices, sucking on it, which reminds me of the use of vapor, vaping. You're sucking on this device and you think you're just sucking on something that's got exotic flavors and names. And in fact, you're sucking on nicotine. And this is the bad thing, especially for the youth. You don't know how easily the youth can get addicted to nicotine. And very quickly, it's highly addictive, yeah. it doesn't get them enough 
dosage of their required drug because they now become drug addicts addicted to nicotine. And, it, you know, heroin, cocaine, nyope, all those things are drugs. They're addictive drugs. The difference is that all of those are illegal. Nicotine, unfortunately, is one of the legal addictions we have in South Africa. There's a few of them. Tobacco, nicotine is one of them, alcohol is the other, and gambling, which you don't ingest as you might nicotine and alcohol, is also an addictive, legal, allowed activity in South Africa. Yes. So you get then addicted to nicotine through using these electronic devices. The problem is that they have been stated by the industry to be good at cessation. The evidence doesn't indicate that. They're not indicative of being useful in cessation. There are okay. medications. There are non-nicotine replacement, the uh, nicotine replacement therapies. There are several well, things. Like that you can use. Yeah. Okay. There are drugs, yes, nicotine alternatives. But there are drugs, medication that you can get prescribed by your doctor. They all are effective. Probably the most effective is cold turkey. You just make the decision. You're going to quit. Sometimes you think about it, it's preparing to quit, and sometimes people just make a spontaneous decision, like, oh, they recognize this is like crazy, it's expensive, it's bad for my health, it makes me stink, I can't taste my food, I can't taste the, the smell the bread baking, so I quit. And then those people quit successfully, the percentage is quite high, and the relapse rate quite low. The problem with starting, and it's especially bad for the youth, starting on these electronic devices is they get addicted and then they can't get enough of their now drug of addiction because the devices don't deliver enough and then they go on to combustible tobacco products mainly cigarettes and that gives them their fix of their drug and that's very very unhealthy so there's supposed to be harm reduction which the industry touts high percentages of less harmful well all that information has been shown by credible scientists not paid by the industry, and that's important. The okay. research that is paid for by the industry must be looked at very, very carefully. Independent scientific evidence shows that it's not quite as harmful, as harmless as, as they claim it to be. Now, here's a little bit of truth. Yes, the electronic devices are less harmful because you don't combust, you don't burn anything. So they are a little bit less harmful than smoking cigarettes. But they are not harmless. Look, nicotine in thing. general, at the end of the day, obviously is addictive and is obviously harmful for your health. Now, you've Dangerous mentioned a number of talking points, right? Um, uh, we discussed, obviously, you know, the cause for uh, these, uh, well, this bill or to be uh, uh, in, into effect, to be re this regulation, etc., for the sale of uh, the heated devices. Now, um, businesses, vape stores and, um, you know, companies that make the vape liquids, the e-liquids, etc., um, they they're obviously going to be uh, affected by, you know, once this bill is implemented, if and when it is, by the taxation effect. Now, let's discuss, um, you know, the numbers behind it, because obviously, um, you know, there's potential revenue that's going to be generated from taxation of the e-cigarette as opposed to that of your normal daily cigarette, like your Philip Morris, your BAT, etc. So how is this now going to play out? How is government going to say, OK, we, we're going to put this percentage for, you know, your normal cigarette and this towards a, a heated device? OK. So can I first talk about that little phrase, the vape shops, as you call them? Yes. That is a word that is used by the industry. Remember that in the early days of electronic cigarettes, yeah. the device was, in fact, quite small and looked very similar to a normal cigarette. It had a colored section at the back that was kind of beige that looked like the filter, and then a white shaft. And that shaft had at the end of it a little LED. So when you sucked on it, the LED lit up at the end and it looked like a cigarette. And they were called electronic cigarettes. And what you got out of them, apart from the nicotine, is, and you exhaled a little kind of puff of something came out of your mouth. It was very small. And they called that vapor. Right. And so when you used these things, you were, the industry created this term vaping. And the problem with it is that it's not true. 
We call it vaping, but what comes out of your mouth and what goes into your lungs, more importantly, is not vapor. Because when we use the word vapor, we think mostly of water vapor. Yes. That's the natural reaction. But it's not. It's now scientifically called an aerosol, which is a combination of many uh, the addictive element of nicotine, many poisonous elements of gases, solid what we call particulate matter. In other words, very tiny bits of solid pieces. You know, think of a rock, think of a little stone, think of tiny particulate matter. It's solid and that all goes into your lungs and it's an aerosol. So vaping sounds quite nice. Uh, Sarfaraz, imagine if I were sitting in your studio now and I said to you, let's put on some music and let's go outside and vape. Oh, let's go and have some fun and we'll vape. Do you well, vape? <laughs> yes. What flavor do you like? And it sounds nice, but mm. in fact, it's not nice. It's a and talking about flavor and sucking yeah. an electronic device. Now you spoke about flavors. You know, this is where I, I want to highlight something. Obviously, mm. um, you know, with regards to vaping and the different types of flavors as opposed to normal cigarettes, and we've seen now where you know your. Uh, um, well-established cigarette brands like Stuyvesant and Camel, Marlboro, etc., have now got flavored cigarette options as well. We obviously press that little ball and you get a flavor in your filter. So they've diversified tobacco. Uh, it just shows how vaping, the industry, has diversified. Smoking has diversified itself. Yes, it's not only the, the result of these electronic devices. And I'm staying away from that word that you use because it sounds uh, glamorous and it isn't. It, it's a terrible topic. Now, Go back to that little bit of vapor that came out of your mouth with electronic devices, or then cigarettes as they were called. Nowadays, you get these huge, dense plumes of smoke, which are highly visible. Now, the reason it's visible is that solid stuff in there. That's why you can see it. So it's no longer just a little puff of what we think is vapor. It's dense clouds of aerosols containing poisons and uh, nicotine and all sorts of stuff. So stay away from vaping and then let's get on to if you want to tax and i'm happy to answer all the other questions yes. the first thing is that the tax is health tax i'm not even going to use the other term that people and journalists particularly generally call it it is health tax and here's the reason why okay all the tax on cigarettes and we hope on the electronic devices will make them more expensive. The biggest reason that people will quit smoking, there's many reasons, making it no longer glamorous, making it difficult to smoke, like you can't smoke in restaurants unless they've got a designated smoking area, banning smoking in public places, it's less glamorous. We have health warnings on packets and that's what the bill will also do is have large graphic health warnings, which tell the truth about the dangers of smoking cigarettes. All those things contribute to people quitting smoking or if they don't quit smoking, certainly less. And particularly, most importantly, it contributes to the youth, especially the youth, never starting to smoke. That's the danger with the electronic devices. They get sucked in by these glamorous sounding exotic flavors and then they get into that and get onto combustible cigarettes and are addicted. So the, the idea is to make it less and less affordable, more and more expensive. It must get more expensive beating inflation every year. It must be con done consistently every year and it must be more than inflation so the products become less affordable. And well, that's the best way people stop smoking. We do that with electronic devices. More and more people expensive. will never start using them. Yes, make and it less as expensive. a result, we don't we will have less of the population getting sick. So it's a health product, a health tax, and we get extra revenue, and we can discuss all the details of that. Plus, we save the public health care costs of treating the diseases, the disabilities, and dealing with the death caused by tobacco products and electronic devices. So the Clearly. government or revenue mm -hmm. and saves a lot of expenditure. It's a win-win. Magic. Now, obviously, there's a lot of harm in this regard, and obviously, there's benefit for some. I mean, for those in the industry, some are going to obviously benefit from, you know, the monetary perspective, and obviously, the end users, obviously, they suffer in the end. Now, uh, you know, 
you were talking about tax, and in conclusion, is obviously we're pushing for time, unfortunately, but um, we were talking about taxation and um, the expected revenue from the e-cigarette uh, excise tax. There were numbers, apparently so, uh, according to, um, you know, uh, the tobacco tobaccoindustries.org uh, website is where I'm quoting from. Now, obviously, they said the uh, excise tax would be around 75% of the cigarette tax. Um, do you think we'd see more of this estimates or, you know, in comparison to your normal cigarette? What do you think would be yeah. the potential uh, taxation? First of all, of you must... You must treat any information which the tobacco industry puts out with great care and caution and suspicion. They're throwing numbers around because they want to convince the public to be anti the tax. But whether it's 75% of the tax which is on tobacco products, or in fact, 75% of the retail selling price, which it should be, so the retail selling price is 100 rand, 75 rand of that should actually be excise tax. That's mm. the World Health Organization's standard recommendation in the FCTC, the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. And it should apply the same way to these electronic devices. Then they become more and more expensive. And as I said, people quit or they use less or they never start. That's the major key, especially the youth never start. And that's a huge benefit. What level the government will set initially, I don't know, but I would like it to be certainly as high as the cigarette tax should be, not what it is. Let's discuss that for a moment. The minister announced that the tax at this last budget two weeks ago increased by more than inflation. Okay, you know what? He was telling the truth, but it's an ineffective truth. Because the tax on a packet of 20 cigarettes was about 17 rand 34, I think, and it went up by, I can't remember, 1 rand 34 or something like that. But what it was is about 8% increase in the tax element. But the retail selling price of cigarettes is around 35 rand. So in actual fact, the real increase was only like 2%. Depends on what product you buy because some packets will cost 30 rand and some 45 rand mm. but the, the effect on the retail selling price was much lower than inflation and that's tragedy so now when we look at electronic devices we must make sure that the tax has an effect of a bringing in revenue and b making the products less and less affordable so that more and more people do not use them and therefore reducing public health care costs, but it's got to be at that level. You can't say, oh, we'll make it 75% of the tobacco tax. That's the industry already trying to convince the government what they think they should do. And what we have to convince the government is that what, they, what their duty is, their primary responsibility is to public health. And in this regard, I'll say always, health trumps profits or health trumps trade, to make it sound more poetic, health beats trade every time. It's more important. So, yes, there might be some profits lost. And I doubt if that will have an effect on the industry. Because, remember, these products are not made by hand by people. Cigarettes are made by machines. It's yeah. not a big deal. There are many, many more benefits to increasing the tax, which is good health tax and good public health policy. Well, Peter, you mentioned something very interesting. And at the end of it all, obviously, you mentioned health tax for the benefit of the people, as you say, to obviously allow for less people to smoke. But, uh, Peter, we thank you so much for your time tonight. Unfortunately, that's all we have the time for for this segment, however. But we will catch up on this again in the near future. Peter, Yuko, we thank you for your time tonight. My pleasure. I'm happy to come back at any time. And maybe your listeners want to send questions into. I'm sure there are going to be many those questions. Qu <laughs> and yes, smokers and alike are going to be commenting below this we show. can answer those questions next time and we can deal with them no problem at all i'm happy and my objective is and the objective of tag is to bring about these public health benefits bottom line we would like to save lives and less of a youth population smoking peter Hugo, thank you for your time tonight have a wonderful evening thank you good night
Bye bye. That's uh, Peter. You go talking to us. So, uh, vapors, smokers of cigarettes, etc. You can comment below, um, share your thoughts on this talking point. Uh, there's apparently going to be a bill that's going to be passed into effect coming soon. But it's now 25 past eight. That's where we leave it for now. We take a quick air break, and thereafter, I speak to CEO of Ota Wayne Duvenaga. We're talking about the e-tolls and uh, the collection to the contract, etc. Mm -hmm. There and more still to come.